Thank you for checking out this no spoilers movie review. This is for the 2019 Australian horror film The Furies. Uh, not available on Shutter yet, but that's where it will be. Uh, well, when I'm putting out this video, it depends on when you find this video to watch it. They uh, it Thursday, October 3rd is when it's available on Shutter. I believe this is a Shutter exclusive, so uh, I don't think you're gonna be able to see it anywhere else for a while unless you end up buying it at some point. So anyway, check it on Shutter. If you don't have Shutter, you should definitely check into that. Because, I mean, I do a lot of reviews on movies that are on Shutter because Shutter has it down. They have the good stuff. Okay, so usually I give a lot of you know background information on the production of the of the film and how it ended up being made and blah blah blah. I couldn't find a whole lot. You probably saw my cat walking by. <laughs> couldn't find a whole lot on this one since it is so new. That's one of the problems. I can find a lot of information on the older films. I can't find a whole lot on the newer ones. So sorry that it's devoid of that. But here's a good review right here. It was written and directed by a man by the name of Tony Dacchino. Um that's all the background information I really have on it. And the fact that it's from 2019 and it's an Australian film. So it has the Australian accents. I love Australian accents. I actually listen to some podcasts that have Australian narrators to it or hosts to it. So sorry, my cat's yelling in the background. She, she hated this movie. It was too violent for her. And that's the thing. It is violent. It is brutal. It is violent. So if that's your thing, if that's what you like in horror films, this might be for you. So the first thing I wrote down is that the colors were pretty dulled in this film. It's one of those things where they really kind of mute the colors to make it look even more bleak, um, which I don't really know if they needed to do that with the setting because it's in Australia and it's kind of, it looks a bit desolate. It's in this kind of weird wooded area that's, I don't know, like it looks like woods, but it looks like desert woods. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not, I haven't been to Australia, so I can't really like properly describe it, but you'll know what I mean if you've seen it or if you end up seeing it after watching this review. Um, so the, the muted coloration just makes it look a little more, more, uh, dire, dark, and like dirty. Um, so yeah, I think it was fine. Uh, the intro sets an extremely violent, dark tone, but the one thing I didn't like about it is it had very, very heavy handed music playing at that point. That I felt was a little bit over the top. Um, it's fine to start, you know, violent and dark out of the gate with some kind of, kind of heavy handed music, but like this was really heavy handed. I felt like they needed to just kind of pull that music back just a little bit, but throughout the rest of the film, I think the music works fine. The beginning exchange with two characters in the film actually kind of gives you a very, very, very strong indication of what's going to have to happen with this character, where this character will end up going. It's extremely strong foreshadowing. Um, extremely strong foreshadowing. I just felt like with, with that and a few other things with the film, it was kind of, uh, not the best writing in my opinion, but not, not bad writing either. It's just kind of like a little more, um, simplistic, I guess is where, is where I'm trying to go with it. And I would have liked it to be a little, you know, kind of like with the, the heavy handed music, like pull it back a little bit, you know, be a little, little more coy in what you're showing. And, you know, so it's just, that's a personal preference. Some people really don't care about that. It's just my thing. The beginning opens up a lot of, uh, the beginning, when it opens up, it actually has a lot of questions that come up based on what's going on. And I think that's a good thing because it really kind of drives the interest in, um, what am I seeing right now? What is the context of this? Which I assume we're going to get to at some point, um, uh, what's gonna happen. I mean, it does a pretty good job of keeping some tension for the most part, there are some parts where the tension kind of drops out because it gets a little slow, but, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit, but it's, um, I think for the most part, they did a really good job of kind of driving interest with their premise and how they kind of slowly reveal things about the overall story and the premise of the film. So I, I think that was a strength. Uh, there's a pretty intense and gruesome kill. Okay, and it's relatively early into the film. I don't know, around like 15, 20 minutes or something like that. Um, there is video of that kill already circulating on the internet intentionally through Shudder. Uh, I saw it on like Bloody Disgusting. I saw that Shudder sent it out on social media. Do yourself a favor. If you haven't seen it yet, don't. Just watch the movie when it's available on Shudder and then 
experience it that way. I think it's more powerful in the context of the actual movie instead of seeing just a little clip of it before seeing the movie because it it like it ruins it. It's much better to see those things in the context of the movie. Plus, if you want to see that, you should give the time to the film because a lot of people worked hard to make this film. So so just do that. I, I just didn't like that they kind of put the that out there. Oh, and this is a perfect time for me to uh, to say thank you to Shutter because they gave me a screener copy of this. So I appreciate that I can um, review this early. I really do because I enjoyed the film. The gore is ample. That's another thing I wrote down. Um, like I said, there's some really, it's very violent. It's very brutal at times, and the gore is plenty. Uh, there are f a few small moments where there's like CG blood, but it's very, very quick, which is the proper way to use CG blood in my opinion. Um, but they did an awesome job with practical effects. Practical effects were great. The costuming was very good as well because um, this isn't really spoiling anything because it's in this little short synopsis it's um like some killer stalking some women in this like kind of forest as i was trying to explain it but can't uh and so each of these guys has like their own costume like masks and everything and i thought they did a really good job with the design of those because they look gross they look creepy and it really helps with the overall tone and ambiance of the film so good on that so when I was watching it, I just kept thinking because it did drag at times and we just kept getting a lot of the same. Uh, I just kept thinking, is there going to be a deeper story at this point? Or I mean, is there going to be a deeper story at any point and when are we going to get that? Uh, the runtime's around uh, an hour and 20 minutes and it felt longer than that, unfortunately, because they had a lot of kind of cat and mouse going on, which, you know, you would assume you would have with a film like this, but it's, um, I felt like they, they had a little extra cat and mouse that they didn't really need. They could have kind of tightened it up a little bit. Uh, it felt like they at times were actually legitimately trying to waste some time just to add to runtime, which I don't appreciate. I'd rather just cut it down. If this movie ends up being an hour, if the movie ends up being an hour and 10 minutes, like whatever, a film is a film. I don't think that anyone should have to feel like, Oh, it needs to be about an hour and a half. Um, just saying it can feel too long and that that's a legitimate thing but you know maybe they had different reasons for doing it i'm just saying what it felt like to me so anyway um let's see what else i had uh oh there's there is an interesting survival twist in this uh i'm not gonna say anything past that because it would get into being kind of spoilery so there just remember this there's an interesting survival twist think about that while you're watching it and you'll understand what i mean uh, and that kind of fits into the overall story and how they kind of slowly give you pieces of the story, which I like. But in the end, I kind of felt like I needed more of the story. Now, they set it up for a sequel to happen, which, to be honest, if there is a sequel, I will. I, I mean, I would like to check it out if I can get my hands on it. If I find out there's a sequel, I will check it out because I want to know where the story goes. And that's a great thing. Like, they slowly kind of reveal stuff, and then when you get to the end of the story, you're like, okay, I'm still intrigued. Let's do another one, because you set it up for another one anyway. But I would have liked a little more story. And like I said, the, it, especially during those times where I felt like they were kind of wasting time and it was really dragging, cut that out, put some extra story in, because they could have gone further with the actual story and some background information, which would have been really cool and could have set things up even better for another movie. So, just saying. Because there were a lot of questions at the end of the film, too, where I was just like, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? Which could be addressed in the second film, but I kind of would have liked some of that stuff up front. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Uh, seems a bit slow. I already covered that. The outfits were amazing. I already covered that. Um... So there's a weird dynamic. I'm going to read this verbatim. There's this weird dynamic with two characters that really doesn't make sense and feels forced to try to add something extra to the film. So there, there are these two characters who are introduced relatively early on. Uh, they try to forge uh, a relationship within the film between these people. It already exists prior to the film starting um, in their, you know, in the world they created. But the problem is a lot of the stuff they do with it feels unnatural it feels very forced and it felt like they were just doing it because they wanted to create an extra dimension to the film and it just didn't work in my opinion 
and, and then especially when you get another character involved and that see that made even less sense and felt even less natural and i was just like i yeah i don't know so so if you've seen it or when you see it you'll you'll kind of know what i'm talking about most likely and i just think that that could have been taken out of it because in the end what this really is and and where this film shines is it's like a large slasher film basically um violence brutality you know scary for some people uh great gore practical effects that's it not not like a deep story there's some intriguing stuff about the story like i said they have the ability with a second film to really amp up the story and really shine and make it so much more than just kind of like the stalk and slash that they ended up having the first one be um but i would say in the end that this film is worth watching i don't think it's one that i want to go back to but it's one that I'm glad I checked out once and I would recommend to everyone check it out once. If you are a person who likes a really straightforward kind of stalk and slash, it's up your alley. You're definitely going to like it. If you're looking for brutal kills, if you're looking for interesting kills and really good practical effects, and that's what you care about most in film, this is for you. Check that out. Definitely hit it up. So now I got to give it the star rating. Out of five stars with half stars in play, I think I'd actually place this, I want to place this at a three. I was between a two and a half and a three, but I think that the intrigue that's left over for a second film, in addition to how well they did with the costuming and the practical effects and the brutality of it, um, I think those things kind of tip me to that three. So uh, a three, it's worth watching in my opinion. Uh, everyone, if you if you have already seen it, I don't know how you would have, or, well, I mean, you could just be watching this video after it's already on Shutter. So if you've seen it at this point, put some comments down there and let me know your thoughts. Or if you're interested in seeing it or your thoughts on slashers in general, put some thoughts down there. But uh, do me a favor real quick. Hit that subscribe. I would really, really appreciate that. That's how I keep motivated with this. That's how people can pay me back. Takes you just a second. It's totally painless. But if you also want to throw me some money, I have a Patreon page. You can do that as well. Uh, you can just check horror movie reviews with Carlin Cook or just check Carlin Cook and you'll find it and there's everything from one dollar a month to five ten and twenty and there's different things that come with those so um if anything do the free thing and hit the subscribe thank you very much thank you Shudder once again for the screener for this and until next time keep it brutal